Hello friends, welcome to ESC Gate PSU short e lecture. Uh, today in this video we are going to discuss uh, the remaining portion of the biodiversity and the conservation unit that is the threat to the biodiversity and the method of conservation of biodiversity. Before moving on to the conservation of biodiversity, let us discuss uh, what are the actual threats to the biodiversity against which uh, we need to make an effort for the conservation of the biodiversity. So friends, uh, the first uh, uh, threat to the biodiversity is the natural cause that is uh, uh, the destruction of the biodiversity because of uh, the natural occurring phenomena that is the forest fire, uh, natural calamities like uh, 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 some of the storms, uh, tsunami, uh, landslide, avalanches, all that. Second is the anthropogenic causes. That is anthropogenic causes means the uh, man-made activity that are uh, responsible for the destruction of the biodiversity. So friends, uh, anthropogenic causes may aata hai over exploitation. This ka matlab ye hai ki uh, humans jo hai wo apni need puri karne ke liye natural resources ko exploit kar rahe hain na ki unhe ek sustainable way mein use kar rahe hain. Second hai pollution and the third hai illegal activities. Friends, illegal activities like uh, hunting and poaching of uh, the animals in order to uh, sell their uh, useful uh, um, body parts like uh, the uh, teeth of the elephant, like the horn of the one horned rhinoceros, all that. Third hai biotic interference, jis mein aata hai jhum cultivation and encroachment. Friends, jhum cultivation ek aisi traditional agricultural practice hai jis mein jo farmers hote hain, wo ek particular field mein, agricultural field mein, uh, kuch saalo tak uh, uh, farming practices perform karte hain and after that uh, they used to burn all that uh, agricultural field and uh, move on to some other uh, field. So there is a huge loss of uh, biodiversity uh, because of this uh, traditional farming practices. And the fourth uh, threat to the biodiversity is uh, the indirect cause that is the deforestation and uh, the habitat destruction. Friends, uh, because of the rapid urbanization, uh, rapid industrialization, there is a huge uh, loss of the forest that comes under the deforestation and the habitat destruction. Because of uh, all that uh, threats to the biodiversity, it is required to make a conservative effort towards the conservation of biodiversity. So uh, here is the method of uh, conservation of the biodiversity that is uh, first is the in-situ conservation uh, and the second is the ex-situ conservation. So friends uh, the first method is the in-situ conservation. Uh, this method uh, refers to the conservation of the species in their own natural environment. Uh, for example if it is required to conserve uh, the polar bear and uh, if we are uh, making an, an effort to conserve them in their natural environment that is in the polar region then this then uh, this conservation practice will comes under the in situ method so here are some example of uh, the protected area that uh, comes under the in situ conservation that is uh, the national park wildlife sanctuary biosphere reserve tiger reserve elephant reserve and the protected forest so friends, baat karte hain national park ki. To national park jo hai, ye ek uh, protected area hai, jahan par conservation practices perform ki jati hai for the flora and fauna with a minimum human interference. Means the human activity are strictly prohibited here. La, the activities like uh, hunting, poaching, grazing, encroachment are strictly prohibited over here. And there are total uh, 106 uh, national park are there in the India. Actually, uh, the national park, uh, the concept of the national park was uh, introduced by IUCN, that is the um, International Union for the Conservation of Nature, in 1969. And uh, it is important to note that uh, the headquarter of uh, IUCN is uh, situated in uh, Gland, that is uh, in the Switzerland. In India. Uh, the oldest uh, national park is uh, the Haley National Park that was constructed in uh, 1936 and in nowadays it is called as the Jim Conrad National Park that is in the state of Uttarakhand. And uh, the largest national park in India is uh, the Hamish National Park that is situated in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Along with that, uh, the smallest national park in India is uh, the South Button Island National Park that is situated in the uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island. So, moving on to the Biosphere Reserve, actually, 
basically the concept of biosphere reserve in india was uh, introduced by the unesco's uh, man and biosphere program that was held at uh, the 1971 recently in in india nowadays in india there are total 18 biosphere reserves uh, of which the oldest is the nilgiri biosphere reserve that was constructed in uh, the 1986 and uh, the largest biosphere reserve is the ran of kutch that is situated in the state of gujarat nilgiri biosphere reserve is uh, situated in the uh, actually uh, nilgiri biosphere reserve is situated uh, in the border of the three state states that is uh, the kerala tamil nadu and uh, the karnataka and out of this 18 biosphere reserve in india 10 of them are uh, under the unesco's uh, network of the biosphere reserve and the remaining 8 are uh, considered considered as a biosphere reserve only in india but not by the unesco and uh, biosphere uh, uh, biosphere reserve may have one or more national park or the wildlife sanctuary within uh, within it and uh, actually uh, many of the ecological uh, research uh, programs and uh, uh, research practices are being promoted in the biosphere reserve it promotes the research on the ecological conservation and uh, the environmental preservation so in this map we can see the various uh, uh, biosphere reserve uh, across the india and uh, the name with uh, underline that is uh, like this are uh, under the unesco network of the biosphere reserve all that are uh, like uh, nanda devi uh, pachmadi achanak mark simli pal sundarban nokrek nilgiri agastamalai gulf of mannar and uh, the nicobar all these are uh, comes under the unesco network of the biosphere reserve and the remaining like uh, the sheshachalam run of kutch cold desert and uh, the kanchenjunga manas the hangdi bang and the last one is the dibru sakhova all these are uh, not included in the unesco's uh, man and biosphere reserve list but are considered as uh, biosphere reserve in india so let us talk about uh, the various zones uh, that are within the biosphere reserve uh, actually there are uh, uh, three area within a biosphere reserve that is the transition area buffer area and core area or it it also called as a zone is starting from the core zone only monitoring happens here no human activity are allowed no educational and training activities are allowed over here only and only monitoring is done over here talking about the buffer zone then in buffer zone tourism are allowed and uh, human settlement can also be allowed in this area along with that research station and the educational and the training practices are promoted over here and in the transition zone uh, tourism and research uh, practices can be uh, promoted over here and human settlement uh, are allowed in the transition area so moving on to the wildlife sanctuary actually a wildlife sanctuary is uh, a protected area where uh, conservation act, uh, conservation practices are performed but along with that some uh, limited amount of human activities are else also allowed over here like uh, grazing firewood collection all uh, those uh, limited activities are uh, are allowed uh, to some extent in wildlife sanctuary inside a wildlife sanctuary uh, the hunting of the animal is completely prohibited and uh, Uh, the tree cannot be cut down for any kind of uh, any kind of use and especially the clearing of the forest for the agricultural uh, purpose is uh, strictly banned over here a sanctuary can be upgraded to the national park and uh, uh, but uh, the national park can't be uh, degraded to a wildlife sanctuary in india uh, today uh, there are total 567 wildlife sanctuary are present and uh, and the concept of uh, uh, wildlife sanctuary are introduced uh, under the wildlife protection act that uh, came into action in 1972 so let us talk about uh, the protected forest uh, these are the uh, protected area in which the conservation uh, practices are performed and these are mentioned in uh, the indian forest act that came into action in 1927 
and in the protected forest some of the outside activities like grazing and etc are allowed but in some cases uh, may not and the reserve forest uh, is also a protected area mentioned in the indian forest act uh, 1927 uh, the major difference in between the protected forest and the reserve forest is that in the reserve forest outside activity are generally not permitted but in some cases uh, they might be uh, permitted to do so but in the protected area the outside practices are allowed but uh, in some cases they may not so talking about uh, the tiger reserve actually the tiger reserve is uh, a kind of protected area that have uh, uh, strictly assigned for uh, the conservation of the tigers only in india total there are 50 tiger reserves present and uh, all the working and the monitoring of uh, the tiger reserve are uh, holded by a uh, statutory body that is uh, ntca means uh, the national tiger conservation authority and uh, the project tiger was launched in 1973 in the palamau tiger reserve that is situated in the state of jharkhand friends uh, this line is very much important uh, that is uh, uh, the launching year of the uh, of the tiger reserve tiger reserve and sorry the tiger uh, project tiger and the state in which uh, the palamau tiger reserve is situated and karnataka is the state with uh, the maximum number of tiger so that's all about the in situ conservation and uh, moving on to the ex situ conservation uh, in ex situ conservation the conservation practices are performed in uh, an artificial habitat just like uh, it uh, happened in the botanical garden and uh, the zoological park so uh, in india botanical garden was established in 1876 as uh, the royal botanical garden and uh, the botanical garden in kolkata is the largest in the world and is famous for the great banyan tree uh, zoological parks also called a zoological garden or uh, uh, animal park it is a facility in which animals are uh, confined within a particular enclosure and uh, are uh, displayed uh, to the public and uh, uh, inside a zoological park uh, this animal may also be breeds so friends uh, that's all about uh, the biodiversity conservation and if you like this video then uh, please do subscribe our youtube channel and you can also like our facebook page and friends don't forget to uh, give your uh, feedback into the comment section